John Bruton's election as Taoiseach in December 1994 came as something of a surprise, even to himself. How does it feel to be called Taoiseach? <laughs> it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> Throughout his career, he had shown many important political qualities. He was hard-working, principled and innovative. But he seemed to lack one crucial quality, luck, until in December 1994, his luck changed. From a wealthy farming background in Meath, John Bruton was first elected to the Dáil in 1969 at the age of just 22. Twelve years later, in June 1981, he was appointed Minister for Finance at a time of serious economic crisis. The new minister had a break from the economy that September when he married Finola Gill. The couple were to have four children. But the government's honeymoon ended with January's budget. Independent TD Jim Kemi refused to support the imposition of VAT on children's shoes, collapsing the government. We face the prospect of a general election. After a brief spell in opposition, a new Fine Gael Labour coalition was formed in November. John Bruton became Minister for Industry, where he had a difficult relationship with Labour, including a row over Dublin gas that led to the resignation from government of Frank Kluski. A 1986 cabinet reshuffle saw him return to the Department of Finance, but the coalition partners could not agree on the following year's budget. The disagreement was one on policy. After losing the ensuing election, Gareth Fitzgerald stood down as leader. John Bruton lost to Alan Jukes in the contest to succeed him. But in November 1990, Jukes resigned. John Bruton was elected leader unopposed. Well, it's an enormous honour for me to be selected to lead the party that founded this state, the Fine Gael Party. Although some attempts to give the party a new image backfired. Mr Bruton, I'm Mr Bruton, don't go, listen. He was optimistic heading into the 1992 election campaign. There's a clear mood for change. People want a change uh, of government. But the mood for change benefited Labour, not Fine Gael, which lost 10 seats. Dick Spring rejected John Bruton's approaches and went into government with Fianna Fáil instead. It seemed that John Bruton had missed his moment, prompting a leadership challenge in February 1994, which he survived. I'm delighted that my colleagues have reposed their confidence in me to continue to lead them. Just months later, a series of unlikely events destabilised the Fianna Fáil Labour government and John Bruton's luck finally turned. A rainbow coalition with Labour and Democratic Left saw him elected Taoiseach. It's a high office, but a humbling one. One of the main issues facing the new government was the faltering peace process. From the start, the Taoiseach's perceived pro-unionist position was questioned. About the image that you have in some parts of Northern Ireland that you're perhaps overly sympathetic, rightly or wrongly, to the unionists. Well, I think it's very important not to think in terms of image, but to think in terms of reality. The fact, the reality is that this government is committed to working with both communities to build on the peace towards true reconciliation. While he worked well with John Major, he also cancelled a planned summit and refused to set a new date until the British agreed to a less hardline position on decommissioning. But he had a famously frosty relationship with Sinn Féin, made worse when the IRA ceasefire collapsed in February 1996. He was strongly opposed to dealing with Republicans while violence continued. I think there are real risks for the country. If a government is too associated in a pan-nationalist front which involves Sinn Féin, while the IRA is still threatening violence. The government supported the introduction of divorce, which was accepted in a referendum by a margin of just half of 1%. The Taoiseach, seen as conservative on moral issues, made what might have been a decisive intervention on the Sunday before voting on the This Week radio programme. It's terribly important that people make a fair and just decision, not just for themselves, not just if they're lucky enough to have a happy marriage to say, well, it would be nice if the law banned divorce, but to make a decision for all the other people that they know who are in tragic situations. In November 1996, the government was rocked by the resignation of Fine Gael's Michael Lowry after revelations about his business affairs. I'll go with my friend, best friend, friend for OK. Overall, the Rainbow Coalition proved surprisingly harmonious. Labour ministers who remembered their previous experience in government with him were impressed by the chairmanship of the Taoiseach. He later explained the advantages to having three parties in the coalition. The presence of a third party reduced the sort of possibility of zero-sum conflicts between just two parties. 
With the economy growing rapidly and unemployment falling, the rainbow faced the June 1997 election with some confidence, but Fine Gael's seat gains couldn't make up for significant Labour losses. Facing a popular government benefiting from an economic boom, Fine Gael lost ground in opinion polls and once again turned on its leader. He survived a motion of no confidence in November 2000, but just two months later another leadership challenge was mounted. That motion was carried by 39 votes to 33. I wish to state that I fully accept this democratic decision. But his political career wasn't over just yet. In September 2004, he was nominated to a five-year term as EU ambassador to Washington. Will you speak out if there are things happening here that you don't agree with? Certainly I will speak out if that is necessary because that's my job. My job is to represent both to the administration and to public opinion uh, Europe's viewpoint and the European Union's viewpoint on issues. But in general terms, where differences arise, my preference would be to ensure that we use the telephone first rather than the megaphone. In retirement, John Bruton continued to comment on public affairs, particularly on Brexit. He remained an original thinker with strong opinions and a dedication to public service. This is a republic. Public office is a privilege that must be paid for in hard work and long hours.